Fleming Sword Global Christian Assembly is the African division of Fleming Sword Ministries UK. Established in 2015 in Adoregeti, we have been mandated to deliver God's people from the oppression of false prophets and teachers and to demonstrate God's acceptable model for ministry. We have now been led to establish God's city assembly in Adoregeti. Connect with the grace of God upon this ministry and your experiences in Christ will never be the same again. Your power remains the same. Yes, you never say. Welcome to Wisdom for Today, Reverend Matthew Akinjide Daniel, ministry. Hello everyone and welcome to the last installment of Wisdom for Today for the month of July. It has been five weeks of wisdom for today and we, we, we thank God as we've been exploring the important topic of breakthrough. When we started, we started by looking at what breakthrough is because so many people have so misconstrued the term or they've so misapplied the term that a lot of people have misconstrued it. So people think that, oh, let's have seven days of breakthrough, 12 days of breakthrough. And it has become so commonplace that many people have actually missed out on the potency of the word to break through. It is meant to be an uncommon dramatic event in our lives. Uh, a lot of people believe that, yes, some miracles qualify. And I agree that some miracles qualify as breakthrough, but not all miracles are breakthroughs. So uh, we were able to examine the fact that breakthrough not only changes your circumstances, it changes your person. It changes the person that has happened to. So when we're talking about a breakthrough, we're talking about usually something that has been long-standing, a condition that you have been trusting God for that was taking far longer than you anticipated. We're talking about a condition that it takes a supernatural occurrence to change the trajectory of that uh, condition. And and so we were able to examine that and then we went on to look at how to have breakthrough in finances something that i believe all of us can use and we use the case of jacob as a case study and jacob was somebody who left his father's house with just the blessing and a rod in his hand that was all jacob had he left with nothing physically but he had everything spiritually and so when he slept on his way and he made a stone as a pillow i don't know how you make a stone a pillow it must have been a fairly comfortable stone i don't know it was a very weird situation and he made a stone his pillow he made a covenant with god he activated his covenant with god that covenant that started with abraham that went on to his father isaac jacob was able to activate it upon his own life and he told god he said if you will prosper me so that one was able to help us know that he was not a prosperous man by any definition when he was making that vow he said if you will prosper me i will pay you a tenth of all the increase that you have given me because he remembered that his, his grandfather Abraham made that covenant with God without God asking him to do so. He did it out of a free will and he saw how his grandfather's life turned out. He also knew that his father Isaac did the same thing and so he was just following the family tradition and we saw how he went on to serve under his uncle Laban who tried to cheat him and then in the end God was able to supernaturally deliver prosperity to him. Now listen to me somebody who's listening to this program maybe it's your first time maybe this is the first one you are listening to this month. You can work for money but it's only God that will prosper you. The only way you will prosper is via God. You can do many things to get money, many bad and awful things. You will still get money. But the, if you want prosperity, you can only get that from God. And then the third week, we went over breakthrough in health and healing. And we used uh, two case studies to cover it. We looked at um, General Naaman from Syria, who was a leper. This guy was having breakthrough, but this was like a massive reproach in his life. He had leprosy. And one of the slave girls that he got from many of his conquests, who was serving him in his house, was able to tell him that, listen, in my, in, in my country where I come, from Israel. We have people that can heal you. His king sent a note to the king of Israel and said, look, my general has leprosy and uh, we have heard that you guys can help. So I need you guys to help me solve his leprosy. The king was shocked. He was thinking to himself, I mean, we are, can, we are not God. How can we solve this matter? And then Elisha had and said, listen, when he comes, send him to me and they will know that we are prophets in Israel. 
And Naaman was shocked how simple the instruction was. How simple the instruction was. He was asked to just go and take a bath in River Jordan, one of the dirtiest rivers at the time. And the guy was, he felt insulted. Me, a whole general from Syria, I've come to meet this man of God. He didn't even come out of his house. Can you see the difference between prophets of the Old Testament and some of our men of God right now? The prophet didn't even come out of his house. He just told the servant, go and tell him to go and bathe in the river. Even when Naaman was trying to give him present, Elisha turned it down. He was a servant, Gehazi, who now went to try and see if he could appropriate it. So anyway, this guy, he was able to get his breakthrough because he dipped in that river seven times and his skin was like that of a baby. And then we looked at the case study of the ten lepers. The ten lepers that came to Jesus and Jesus healed them and told them to go and show themselves for. And only one came back to say thank you. And the Lord said, no, because you have done this, you are now made whole. Which means that the difference between made well and being made whole. Whole mean, now means that it's not just blindness that is solved in your life. Your whole situation is now sorted. So we were able to emphasize the importance of thanksgiving. There are so many ungrateful people before God. God gives them one breakthrough. The next problem, they're beginning to abuse God by accusing him of what he has done. They've forgotten all the good things he has done. Anyway, so we were able to look at that and know that yes, you can also experience breakthrough in your healing and your health because that's what Jesus came down for. That's why he died on the cross because he sent his word to us and we were healed he sent his word to us and we were healed and then we moved on last week to explore the important matter of breakthrough in prayer breakthrough in prayer and this was when we were able to oversee king jehoshaphat like i said i don't like using common examples because i don't know about you but for me they're becoming boring how many times can you mention noah to me i become bored after some time i'm sure there must be other examples in the bible so i'm always trying to look for unusual examples so king king jehoshaphat was a king that started ruling after his father asa died and or ash asha or however you want to call it i don't know how they pronounce it in hebrew language but it's he spelled like we spell Asha in Yoruba. His father died and his father was a very wicked man. But one thing about Jehoshaphat was that he decided not to go the way of his fathers. So he was able to start to restore the ways of the Lord. He started to go back to the way of God. And because he did this, God started to prosper him. God started to help him. And one of the things he did was immediately he became king and he had just been sworn in as king. The first thing that happened to him was that these old enemies started to amass themselves against them, the Moabites and the Ammonites. So I want to tell somebody listening to me, it is not wise for you to think that you will not have problems or you will not have people trying to pitch themselves against you. It is far more important for you to know that in Jesus Christ, you already have victory over them. For you to think that everybody will like you, everything will go on smoothly, it's not a wise position to assume because even Jesus was not liked by everybody. So can you, can you top Jesus? Can you top who Jesus is? Or who Jesus was when he was man here on earth. So there will always be enemies. There will always be adversaries. There will always be people that don't mean us well. There will always be people trying to hurt us. There will always be people trying to do bad to us. You cannot legislate against that. There is nothing you can do against that. There is nothing you can do to stop that. That's just the way it is. But... You can take solace and you can take confidence and you can take your joy from the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. And because he died on the cross of Calvary, you will have the victory over all the powers of the enemy and that God will only deliver you from them all. So one thing that was very significant about this case of King Jehoshaphat is the fact that when he called the men of God and said, we are the prophets in the house, let us pray. How are we supposed to deal with these enemies coming at us? The first time God said the, you know, the battle is not yours the battle is mine that's where that came from a lot of people don't even know uh, when they say you know the battle is not yours the battle is the Lord that's where it came from it was from King Jehoshaphat the God told him you know what literally you are not going to have anything to do with this I'm the one that will fight on your behalf may God fight on somebody's behalf that is listening to this program in the name of Jesus that is the sweetest type of victories you can experience the one that it is God that is fighting for you you don't even have to lift a finger do you know what the children of Israel did in this first battle they were dancing and singing and blowing the trumpet and by the time they got to the battlefield god has already destroyed the enemies for them 
these people started shooting at themselves. They, so what did the children of Israel do? They just went and took all the jewelries and everything and became even richer. May that be your lot in the name of Jesus. Somebody who is listening to this program right now. May God give you increase even from the carcasses of your enemies, even from the carcasses of your attackers in the name of Jesus. So you can see without a shadow of a doubt that these people, they relied completely on God and because they relied on God, they were able to make sure that it was God that was guiding everything they were doing. So God told them, don't do anything. The battle is not yours. The battle is mine. And that was exactly what happened. So for you to experience breakthrough, in prayers, it is very important for you to know that you must be totally dependent upon God. No matter what happens, you must always go into the place of prayer. You know, some of us, we get so comfortable and many of us are guilty of this and we just forget to pray. We forget to pray fervently because now we are comfortable. Now things are going really well for us. Now we just think, oh no, we're not sure we need this God, which is what is happening to the Europeans now because many of them are comfortable now. They've forgotten that it was God that is the bedrock of their prosperity. So they are beginning to subconsciously question, why do we even need this God? Like I keep telling people, we don't need missionaries in Africa anymore. We need missionaries in Europe now because Europe is fast falling behind in the things of the gospel. So if anybody is being raised, I'm not asking you to just come and open a church so you can get foreign currency. I need people who have a genuine heart to these people. Europe needs missionaries now. It is no longer Africa that needs missionaries. It is Europe that needs missionaries now. So anyway, and I promised last week because it was a two-part thing that we could not finish uh, last week uh, just on King Jehoshaphat. I made a promise that we're going to look into breakthrough in prayers in the life of our our Lord Jesus Christ. So that is exactly what we are going to do today. In the days of your power, be your people shall be willing. Yeah, yeah. Your young men shall see vision. Your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. For power to be stronger and be wiser. I'm your brother, Reverend Matthew Akinde Daniel, welcoming you to this anointed program. Today, we want to look at breakthrough in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, breakthrough in prayers. It is very important to lay the foundation that Jesus Christ was a very prayerful man, he came to give us the example and everything he did was, to, was meant to stand as examples for us so that we can imitate and get the same result. And Jesus, he was a prayerful man which means that he believed in prayer. There are so many parts of the Bible that it said most times he will withdraw to the mountain and he will go and speak to his father. Most times he will just take some time off and go and speak to his father. Most times he will just withdraw himself and go and pray to father. There was one that said that he went to the mountain to pray and in the morning, which means he prayed from night to morning, so Jesus was a very prayerful man and no matter what you are going through, prayer will always be an essential part of everything that you do, an essential part of everything that you do. Jesus was praying, but this particular one that I want to bring to our attention is from the book of Matthew chapter 26 and I'll be starting from verse 36 of Matthew 26. That is the prayer in the garden of Gethsemane. This was you know, before Jesus went to the cross. Imagine this was a very important moment in all of our lives jesus decided to pray so he was giving us an example of what we should be doing we should always pray with man should not always faint but pray so i start from verse 36 he said then jesus came with them to a place called gethsemane and said to the disciples sit here while i go and pray over there verse 37 and he took with him peter and the two sons of zebedee and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed i want people to know that going to the cross was not easy for jesus and know that many people think oh because jesus came from heaven all of it was unky dory he knew he was going to die on the cross and he just sauntered and went to the cross that is not true as of that moment that jesus was here on earth he was 100 percent human being and so he felt the exact the same way any human being would have felt afraid 
and distressed. I'm so happy that the Bible is so complete. If all these details were not in the Bible, many of us would have made the wrong presumption that oh, everything was easy for Jesus as he went to the cross. No, no, no. Like any human being, he despaired. Jesus despaired. That's why it is told us here in verse 37 of Matthew 26. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. He was praying this prayer out of anguish. I don't know about you. I've been in this place several times in my life before that I've had to go to God and say, Lord, I don't know what to do here. I need your help. I need a breakthrough here. In verse 38, he said, Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He was very open with his disciples that, Guys, man, I'm really sad here. And I'm very distressed. Please, can you just join me? Let us pray. You guys stay here and pray. Let me go and talk to God over there. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. You see, he started by making his supplication known to God in his prayer. When we want breakthrough in prayers, we have to be honest with God. A lot of people are disingenuous with God, even in the place of prayer. Tell him as you feel. He's your father. Express everything you have in your heart. Your disgust, your disappointment. He already knows. But putting, you know, admitting it means that you are being honest. Not this one. They said, oh, you just have to keep saying everything is okay. Everything is all right. No, if, if things are not okay, tell God things are not okay. You talk to an average Christian in Africa now. How are you? Oh, I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. Uh, how are things going? Oh, God has gone ahead of me to me. They'll be quoting scripture to answer you. Somebody who has not eaten in this morning. Instead of you to tell me you have not eaten, maybe I'll go and buy you food. You'll be quoting scriptures to me. Ah, things with you. Oh, God has gone ahead of us to make the crooked places straight. Uh, oh my God. There's a place for common sense. Just because we are worshipping God doesn't mean we now become zombies and be behaving like automatons. If things are not well, say things are not well. Let us join hands together. Let's pray. Let me see whether I can even help you. Sir. Let me see whether I can. we can join together to find a solution to your issue. Everybody will be forming and be pretending like everything is okay. When everything is not okay. So Jesus went to God and said, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup pass over me. He was saying, now, is it possible for me to avoid this cross that I'm going to? I know it will be news to a lot of people because they felt Jesus was perfect. He never made any mistake. Yeah everything was okay because he came from heaven no he was human like you and i yes it is true that no sin was found in him but he was still human 100 percent human being so he felt distressed who wants to go and die an agonizing death on the cross for many people that may not know in those days when people were being crucified they wore no clothes so he was crucified naked not to talk of the beating not to talk of puncturing his side with with spears who wants to die such agonizing death they will now they won't kill you or they won't even let the person die they will now nail them to the cross and allow them to die slowly for hours who wants to go and die that kind of death so when he went you saw that his disciples were sleeping and he was very angry he said, what's wrong with these people i mean this terrible place and you guys are still falling asleep in verse 42 he said again a second time he went away and prayed saying oh my father if this cup cannot pass away from me unless i drink it may your will be done may your will be done and it was just after that that Judas betrayed him and he was arrested later to be crucified. What was Jesus' breakthrough in prayer there? He recognized the superiority of his father. He recognized that his father's decision was final. He recognized that God's decision always comes from a position of love, even when we don't understand it. He understood that he had to still bow down to the will of God, even when he cannot explain it. There are so many people that you want an answer to everything, every single thing. Now, look at us now. How many years, thousands of years after, we are still enjoying the obedience of what Jesus did. But by that time, even Jesus, he was not fully 100% with the, with the plan. You know, if, if you believe that God is superior to you, then you must believe that if you are connected to him via his son, Jesus Christ, then his decision is the best for you. Even if you may not understand it, whatever you are going through is the best for you. Now, I'm not saying this because, oh, I've, 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 me, you know, I've come to that position. No, I've been in that disposition several times that I've had to be in anguish and say, Lord, why is this happening? I've been in that position too. But we must all come to the place of breakthrough where we know that if we are praying according to his will, then he has had us and he will give the appropriate
appropriate answer in his time and we leave it there we can't play god we can't say we're twisting god's hand like he's a human being and we start to now make, play all this kind of gymnastic trick they keep teaching us no you must go from a position of faith and whatever he does then you trust him it's not easy trust me i'm going through certain things even as i'm recording this right now that is not easy on the flesh but uh, over time i'm slowly slowly learning to know that god is superior god is superior to me and he loves me those are the two standpoints from which i pray for he's superior to me which means there are many things he's privy to that i don't know and he loves me I mean, he will not harm me deliberately he will not allow things to go against me because he's my father if he sent jesus to me what else, what else will he withhold from me what else will he withhold from me so i trust him explicitly even when my soul is doubting him i my whole spirit trust in him now let us pray because i know it's our tradition to pray every last saturday of the month and i don't want this to be any different my lord and my god i use this opportunity to pray for all those who are listening to this broadcast they might be in the middle of distress in the middle of very difficult situation under this anointing as i record this father i pray for each and everyone listening to me under the sound of my voice who can hear this whenever they're hearing it father lord i pray that you will go and meet them at the point of their need i pray for a mighty breakthrough over their circumstances in the name of jesus my lord and my god i pray that you will do something tangible for those who are listening to this broadcast in the name of jesus in the name of jesus my lord and my god i pray i pray i pray i pray father lord that even when we don't fully understand what it is that is happening to us that you will help us father lord that you will give us the fortitude even to bear with whatever it is we have to go through just like jesus did my lord and my god i pray for a massive breakthrough once again for all those listening to this program i pray father lord that in areas of their lives that have experienced standstill father lord let there be a massive breakthrough in the name of jesus my lord and my god i pray that their story shall be shalom nothing broken nothing missing in the mighty name of jesus my lord and my god i thank you i give you all the glory all the honor and all the adoration i use this opportunity to pray for my country nigeria even as we go through these very turbulent and very uncertain times that lord your will shall be done i pray for those who are in governance that lord you will turn their heart because your word says that the hearts of the kings are in your hand turn their heart the right way lord so that they can make the right decisions affecting millions of lives i pray for the average nigerian people and those who will listen to this that may not be nigerian father lord i pray that you will touch their hearts to your direction in the name of jesus my lord and my god i thank you i give you all the glory all the honor and all the adoration because you are god all by yourself father lord i worship you i give you all the glory in jesus mighty name i have prayed amen amen and amen you can still reach us on 0909-526-0406 you can still reach us on 0909-526-0406 or you can still send us a, an email at info at flaming sword africa dot org info at flaming sword africa that's also our website where you can still get so many information so much information about us if you're led to bless us in any manner shape or form uh then you can still get the uh, you know the details for which you can use to bless us as well or you can call us to ask for it as well so father lord we, we are grateful we give you all the glory for this month of July, even as we transition to the second part of this year. We continue to ask you that you go ahead of us in every way. Let all the glory go to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I just want to thank those who continue to listen. I'm your brother, Reverend Matthew Agnede, and is saying thank you for listening. And until I come your way next month, where we'll be tackling a whole new set of topics that will be edifying to you and uplifting to you i want to say thank you for listening and bye for now release your presence oh God. Oh, yeah, yeah. we long to feel you more we want to touch who you are we want to know who you are yeah 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 yeah, yeah. oh Lord, yeah since you so love you since us so know I know you have been blessed by this message. Reverend Matthew is a prophet and an apostle of God. Connect with us in this ministry. Your life will experience a transformation. You can partner with us by giving as you are led by God. To call, text, or WhatsApp us, the number is 0909 
Again, the number is 0909-526-0406. You can email us on info at flamingswordafrica.org. That is info at flamingswordafrica.org. Our website is www.flamingswordafrica.org. Again, that is www.flamingswordafrica.org God bless you.